The genre of horror is a great expanse. Great expanse. We want to explore it. We've spent years building our credibility, our reputation, interviewing people from all levels of horror, discussing visual and literary horror. This is our exploration. This is Full Spectrum Horror. All right, all right, all right. We're going to learn today. Good evening, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Full Spectrum Horror. I am your host, Mr. Christopher Hyman, and tonight we are going to be discussing a rather obscure hammer horror film called Demons of the Mind. But uh, tonight is also rather different uh, because we are not uh, doing our usual usual, um, uh, merry-go-round or regarding news, uh, fan mail, and reviews. No, we are just going to discuss 
the film. And of course, with me as always is my co-host to help me do that, um, Mr. Eric Moore. Gordon scares everybody, everybody, and uh, welcome to the show. You know, want to acknowledge my uh, co-host, Mr. Chrissy Chris Highland. <laughs> Horror sex symbol. I thought I was the host. Yeah. But uh, as I as I said before the show, you can be the host tonight. Well, you know, you're always the host, but I'm the co-host and uh, backup and all that. But yeah, you know, I mean, I I watched this film and uh, actually got a lot out of it. I was I was actually surprised. Um, very interesting film. But anyways, yeah, yeah, we're not doing the. Uh, other segments tonight because we want to focus on this film since this is actually a very uh underappreciated and actually you know i did not know about this film and i'm big into hammer horror and uh you know this when i watched it a couple days ago uh, it was my first time. Um, yeah, I watched it a couple. I watched it a couple of days ago, and I wasn't sure if I saw it before. But as the film went on, I realized, oh, I saw at least part of it. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's an interesting film. It's a little bit. Uh, different from the usual uh, Hammer films in that this is not an adapting a uh, major work. This one's actually an original uh, storyline done by uh, Hammer themselves. And uh, I found it interesting because uh, the, you know, the story, the um subjects it gets into and you know some of the little details were very interesting and you know honestly this one's a slightly slower pace than a lot of the hammer films but yeah, because, because most of the most of the plot points you know I mean and action they don't take place toward until towards the end yeah but uh the actual screenwriting on this was was fairly brilliant i mean i i i appreciated it um you know they were getting into the ideas of incest and that and how uh you know barons and that you know the family lines and that uh dealt with uh you know they figured that they had to keep the bloodline pure yeah. and what's funny is that uh you know these these ones in the olden times until it was discovered that you know incest was really bad and you ended up really uh fucking up your family line um you know until then it was like a common thing i mean shoot all the way back to ancient egypt uh you had incest you had uh family members uh marrying family members and you know you had like um you know like uh the british governing family there was um 
you know, certain aspects of them, you know, like they all, you know, like getting weak chins and big noses and stuff and buggy eyes and, and that, uh, from, you know, marrying cousins or sisters or brothers or that, you know, too close of a, and, um, in this story, uh, Baron Zorn, the thing is that his family was doing a lot of incest and that. And when he he ended up, he married a peasant to try to clear up the uh, uh, problem in his family, which was insanity, literal insanity. And, uh, you know, members of his family would become killers, literally become killers. They'd kill people. They had this kind of bloodlust that ran through the family. And he married the peasant and thinking that, oh, yeah, you know, this me uh, having children with this peasant is going to solve the problem. Unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, for And, you know, in Hammer fashion, uh, Hammer decided to uh, show this insanity also hitting the peasantry as well because the peasants in this village right you know right next to his estate they're pretty nutty people too wouldn't wouldn't you say mr island mm, well I guess that's not kind of a gray area. Yeah, because I mean they're kind of religious fanatics and stuff, and they have this uh, tradition about killing demons. Yeah, and they have this thing where they where they make up a dummy out of wooden stuff and they um show how they kill demons they they cut off the hands of the demon and hold them down and stab them with the uh cross and then burn them <laughs> and they show this kind of towards the beginning of the film this this deal and you know they've got a priest in this movie uh, I is he a friar would you say Mr. Highland or just I, supp I suppose yeah well let's just put it this way he's a fucking nutcase and, and he comes in and he's preaching and yelling and Stomping around and stuff. Yeah, he spends like he spends all night wandering around in the forest. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is that what ends up happening is that uh, one of the peasant girls is murdered. She disappears, and. The killer goes and dumps flower petals all over her. It's not explained who kills her, does it? right? Oh, not not really. But you kind of you kind of later on realize who the actual killer was, and it's part of the reason. You know why the 
Baron uh, has locked up is locking up his family is because that is the family thing is that they kill people and they kill people in a certain way. And the way that I read it in, in the story was that he killed the peasant girl because it's like a, it's like a, a, a thing that they go through. And so he kills kills the girl and then his people you know he has he has his support structure around you know the 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 very scary maid lady mm-hmm. and the bald guy yeah the the bodyguard yeah and they clean it up And, you know, you find out that periodically uh, the the young women in the village have been uh, taken and they assume, because they're religious nut freaks, that it's a demon that lives in the forest. That's killing them. So they're all afraid of the demon out there, that the demon's there. And, you know, what it really is, is it's the Baron. (laughs) Baron. And the Baron's got two, uh, well, not young. I mean, they're, they're, what would you say? They're in, in like their 20s? Thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, brother and sister, and the thing is that he brings the the sister in. Uh, beginning of the movie, they're in in the process of doing that. She manages to get away. Uh, she ends up in the forest, some pl- place. It's a, it's away from uh, where their area is, and she. She actually is befriended by one of the few normal people in the <laughs> fucking movie, yeah. which is which is this uh, woodcutter, and he takes her, and he's they end up having sex. They're 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 in his woodcutting cabin and stuff, and she's all happy. She's happy she's normal she's happy and that and her f- father's people come find her drag her out of the woodcutter's place and take her away and they take her to the estate which this is a freaky ass estate and it looks it looks frightening wouldn't you say, Mister Highland? Well, it's rather large. Yeah, it's large, and what I found interesting is the symbolism of it. What do you mean? The estate and the house kind of represent the minds of the people in it. It's kind of off, and that it's kind of you know it's it's like a prison. It is literally like a prison. It's it's kind of a weird <laughs> estate, and it just it just reminded me of this symbolism of the mind. You know, I mean, you know, the the house is literally a prison. It's a labyrinth, a mirrored maze. Uh, and it's like the disjointed gazes of the occupants. I mean, 
you know, it's it's weird. It's uh you know, and the filmmaker does a lot of long shots and that inside the house. Mm-hmm. It's haunting and empty, tilted. You know, it's a mind off balance. That's what I kind of get from it. You know, and it's literally, it's literally the people that's in there. Uh, You know, you feel sorry for the brother and sister because they treat them like prisoners. They lock them away. They're literally in rooms right next to each other. But the father does not want them uh, to associate with each other. The reason why is because they're at the age where they would start having sexual feelings for each other and there would be some uh, incest going on. And you kind of get that. You... You know, but the audience, when they think about it, it's like, oh my God, these people are psycho because the, because they're torturing these poor uh, ki- kids. Well, uh, young man and young woman. I mean, there's this one scene, and I loved, I loved it because. It's one of the few scenes I've ever seen in a film of them actually doing a uh, technically correct bloodletting. And, oh, it's a, yeah. and it's a scene, well, also it gave, uh, be, you know, because this is a Hammer film, they needed to have at least one or two uh, naked uh well, naked or partially naked uh, scenes, and they needed to have blood because this, is, as I said before, Hammer film. They have to have blood in the Hammer film. So what they did is they had the. I guess I'm going to call her the nurse, the lady, and she's sitting there and she's doing bloodletting on the daughter and you can see that there's scars on her leg from the bloodletting device because you know and i'd actually seen uh these before i'd seen documentaries on old medical methods and stuff and they showed this exact thing that they used and what it is is it's this little block like thing and it's on a catch, and what it does is it drives uh, like a razor set of blades into the person's skin and cuts their skin open and ca- you know causes bleeding. And the thing is that you know with bloodletting, what they would do is they would take a little jar. And they would warm the end and push it up against the the skin after they use this device on it. And they would drain out uh, probably about half pint of blood out out of this. And because of the razor blades, the... uh, you know, it wouldn't. Uh, you know, the blood, the blood wouldn't stop immediately. So you know, they get like this big old thing of blood, and of course, you know, they get rid of it. And they figured that by doing that, it would equalize the humors. You know, and a very well known. Situation where they uh, equalize the humors too much 
was our first president, George Washington, who ended up with pneumonia and his doctors blood led him to the point where he bled to death. So, you know, that was very interesting. And it was right after this that you started finding out that Baron Zorn thought that his family's blood was tainted and that was the reason for the insanity that they were it cursed. Al- yeah. It also, it also explains why the brother is pale when you see him. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. I love the actor that they got got for it. You know, because uh, you know, uh Shane Bryant who who played the played the part. I saw I saw him a f- few years later. He was in uh Dan Curtis's uh uh portrait of Dorian Gray and he played Dorian Gray in it. Oh. And yeah, he he's he's a really good actor, and this was his uh, theatrical movie debut. Interesting, huh? And the uh, sister, the sister who was played by Jillian Hill, uh, she was like a last minute replacement. Uh, for a pop icon named Marianne Faithful. Oh, yeah. And the reason for recasting was due to insurance reasons. Pretty much half of the, you know, pretty much, actually most of the cast was was, uh, re- uh, Re uh, yeah. cast, huh. yeah, uh, yeah. They they ended up uh, they had tried to get uh, for Baron Zorn. They tried to get Paul Schofield and James or James Mason, and uh, they. Uh, they couldn't afford them. They just turned to turn the part down. They read oh. the script and said, "Oh fuck no!" <laughs> yeah, you know, they even had uh, Sir Dirk Bogard shortlisted as Zorn. You know, and the Doctor. Uh, yeah, was that act? Yeah, him I've seen in, in quite a number of things. Yeah, um, he actually was a replacement because the guy that was originally going to play the part he withdrew from this movie. His name was Eric Porter, and he withdrew from the movie. Uh, to do the film Hands of the Ripper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, you know, I thought I'd throw in a little bit of uh, trivia there. But anyways, yeah. So so we talk about the doctor. The, the, the thing is that this doctor comes in and he thinks that he's going to be able to uh, uh, cure them of this affliction. He's he's got like these this radical uh, idea of how 
of how to do it. I I still don't get the idea of how how he's going to do it. It's it's kind of like a machine or a therapy that he that he does. They don't get much into that, do they, Mister Island? No, 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 not at all. I mean, we get to see a machine that looks weird and and stuff, and we see him do something with the Baron that brings back memories and stuff. And wow, he, he, uh, he hypnotizes him. Yeah, he hypnotizes him, and Baron Zorn. Uh, remembers what happens to happened to his uh, wife. Uh, she actually went and committed suicide. She cut her throat in front of him and the kids. Oh, oh! Actually, the lady is is not a nurse. She's uh, their aunt Hilda. <laughs> And the doctor, the doctor is one that's been uh, basically thrown out of the medical and, you know, thrown out by the scientific community. And, you know, uh, he's... Dr. Falkenberg and he thinks that he's going to get a fork, fortune uh, out of his apparatus if he can cure the kids. And it's it's amusing. So anyways, at one point uh, the doctor comes up with this quote unquote therapy. And what he does is he brings in a blonde uh you know uh peasant girl and dresses her up like Emile's uh sister Elizabeth, right? And what happens is that the doctor hypnotizes him to make him see the girl as Elizabeth. And so the girl comes dressed up in one of Elizabeth's uh, dresses and Emile sees her and he comes at her. She freaks and starts running, and he goes and chase at, chases after her, ends up chasing her into the forest, and then the hypnotism goes off, and he freaks out when he sees that it's not Elizabeth, and he starts killing the woman in the exact same way that we saw the other peasant girl uh you know earlier in the film being killed and he strangles her he kills her and then he throws the petals on her just like the other one and leaves her and when the professor finds professor has the body found and uh taken care of uh, he comes up with this theory that the father was somehow, you know, because of the father's insanity, that he was projecting it onto his son, and his son was like a puppet and doing exactly the same thing as the father, that the father insanity was controlling the children did, did you get that that part of it Mr. Highland mm -hmm. yeah it's like I'm sitting there I'm going what 
Yeah, that's that's one of the uh, funny parts of this film. And so the thing is that um, stuff starts hitting the fan. Uh, The peasants find the girl's body and... Well, not on... Not only that, they they witness uh, the Baron dumping a body into the into the um, is it the lake. river or lake? Lake, lake. Okay. Yeah, the lake. Yeah, throwing her body in the lake, and so they freak out and they've dis- they've realized who the demon is, and. They track him. They start tracking him down. The kids get loose. They're running away. Uh, the uh, townspeople are going. You know, they're they're going after anything, anyone that's not them, and and shooting them. Uh, Emil. Ends up getting shot and killed. You know, he dies slowly in his in his sister's arms. They end up capturing a uh, Baron Zorn, and they put him through the demon exorcism thing. Uh, the crazy uh, monk guy, he comes with a flaming cross and they ruin, they hold, I guess they, do they hold down his arm, arm yeah. or they, they cut off his one hand? I, I think I saw them cutting off his one hand. Mm-hmm. And then the the priest is overhead and he jams the cross through his through the baron's heart killing him now this this uh other gentleman who was with the professor well the i wouldn't call it, uh, Hux, the huckster uh anyways he's he's trying to help elizabeth but the moment they kill the father she all of a sudden freaks out and starts going after him with her you know scratching his scratching him with her her fingernails like she's insane and that's literally how they end the movie is her Going after the the young gentleman who who was uh, with the uh, professor, and yeah, it it was interesting because I did I did find that the um, that the incest thing the curse slash insanity aspect was interesting. It made it a lot different from other Hammer films that we've seen. Um, This one, I don't know. What what did you think uh, about the um, characterizations in the film? Well... They were, uh, I'd say, well, well written. Yeah, I mean, you you did feel sorry for the for the brother and sister. Yeah, it, you know they they made them very human, but the fact is that in the end they were actually suffering from this insanity. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't imaginary like what you get the impression of at the beginning of the film. It, it was a lot. It was a lot different. <sighs> yeah, 
you know, oh man, the 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 actor that they got from uh for Dr. Falkenberg, <laughs> he was awesome, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I always liked him. Um I liked him in um I'm trying to remember his name. Was was he Robert Hardy? Mr. Highland? Uh I don't remember. Okay. Well, you probably remember him from your favorite anthology Tales from the Crypt. I haven't seen all of it. Oh, okay. Well, he's I he's in the it's last story uh, and he plays a blind man. And he acts pretty much the same way he acts in this. Oh. You know, he has that oh well I you know I'm very monotone and that is the way I talk. <laughs> oh God. But you know that, you know, he he's he's very creepy. Let's put it that way. So he worked very well in a Hammer film. I don't remember if he ever did another Hammer film, but um, yeah, very very good. And of course, you know, uh, the gentleman who played. Um, uh, Baron Zorn. Well, you know, I mean, he he had to uh, really, uh, you know, he was he was like the the main main character. He, you know, you got the idea about the obsession about. Uh, the psycho you know the the insanity in that but yeah you know i mean this is you know if uh people really uh want to see a very good psychological uh film that's actually a hammer horror film so it has all the that good hammerness to it uh, this one's actually really good for you. You know, with a, with us try, trying to find copies of this, I had a hell of a time. I want, I honestly, after watching it, I wanted a copy of this film. And I kept going through all my uh, digital uh copy sources which you know i get i can get some really uh good good copies and all of them were fucked up all the copies of this film were just totally fucked up you know uh for some reason half the uh Half the copies that were downloadable, uh, they were missing the last 20 minutes of the film. Oh, that it, doesn't make any sense. It just cut off. Yeah, so I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get this for my collection, which really pisses me off. Because, you know... I do, you know you know I I do uh, digital downloads now because because of all the trouble I've had over the years with my niece stealing my films you know if I get if I get a DVD my sis my niece grabs them and they ruin them uh, it doesn't you can't it's too bad you can't uh put mouse traps on them. <laughs> Already tried. Oh. Already tried putting them around the thing. Didn't work. 
I put up signs. I did everything. And her and her friends would go and steal my movies. I mean, at one point, I bought four copies of Res- Reservoir Dogs. Because I would go in and <laughs> find that that either my copy was finished, was gone, and she had scratched up my copy, my DVD, or uh, she gave it off to a friend and the friend lost it. It's like, oh, well, sorry, Uncle Bell. You can't, you know, we lost your film. Yeah, just just like she did with my uh, yeah my Quentin Tarantino movies. Yeah, spent spent eighty dollars on a collector's edition uh, Pulp Fiction just to have it have them go and steal it, leave the box, but steal well, the DVD. Well, yeah, you know what you should do. You should. I have a. Uh... DVD case with um, with the disc uh, as bait, but have uh, something that would really freak them out. You know, like a certain movie that we're not discussing anymore. That's disgusting, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. I tried that. Oh, I actually, you, oh yeah, it, I actually. Did it work? No. Oh, they they didn't get the. Didn't, no, didn't, they didn't, actually didn't went them? in. They went in, tried to get my another copy that I bought of Pulp Fiction, and I and I put Uli Lamel's Black Dog in there. What happened? They found out that that it wasn't Pulp Fiction. They went through my. Uh, DVDs and switched everything around and then still stole my Pulp Fiction and scratched it up. Gave it back to me. The thing was literally covered in scratches. So when I found out about doing digital downloads and I found out about having, uh, you know, my uh, two terabyte drives and stuff, I started downloading just uh, digital copies. So my entire collection is on 10 of these. And so I have all my movies, all my digital downloads on these, and she can't get to them. Well, next time you see her, you can tell her, oh, we, we, watched, um, uh, we watched a movie and discussed it, and, and it was about you. Yeah, I should. Oh my god, about oh my god. You know, I can't even say that say anything like that. Oh my god. Cuz, you know, here here I've been sick, right, for the last couple of days. And my niece has been a complete and utter bitch around here, screaming, yelling, fighting with her boyfriend and stuff. Just making it wonderful for when I'm sitting here sick as a dog. I'm kind of lucky right now. I'm, you know, right now I'm well medicated, so I'm able to uh, do the show. (laughs) But I mean, yesterday I was, I could hardly get out of bed. It was that bad. So anyways, yeah, so... You know, 
what what do you think, Mister Highland? I mean, you know, you you kind of wondered how I was going to uh, present this, you know, talk about this movie, and you see, I got a lot out of it, huh? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was an interesting film, the way that it was presented, and it wasn't. Uh, gross and it didn't freak me out so I was able to really get into the um get into the themes and the and that and really actually look at this film cuz you know when when it when a film really bugs me it 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 makes it hard for me to really uh analyze it <laughs> you know just you know just like when a friend said that i should go for necromantic and i'm sitting there going oh fuck <laughs> yes i know la 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 is right oh my god that uh Oh, the oh. soundtrack's lo oh. the soundtrack's lovely. What? Yeah, the soundtrack's lovely, but oh my god! And then and then the thing is to find out that uh, Dario Argento, in his Masters of Horror uh, oh. segment, the one with the uh, ugly girl with the with the sexy body. I haven't seen that yet. Oh well, in this one scene, she she goes and bites off this kid's you know what, and they actually used uh, the one from Necromantic. Literally, they said it on the making of. Yeah, we had gotten this. This was a leftover from the film Necromantic, and I'm going, oh my. God. God, and this was a big ass chubby, chubby wiener on on this kid. They fitted it on on him for the scene, and it was like, oh my God, look at that thing! <laughs> and then to find out about that, oh my God. Ugh. Of course, Dario was a little bit weird in that one. I mean, you really got to see it. Hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, just saw is, the, I just saw the ice cream episode. Oh, that one was good. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I love those. Um, I love the... Uh, Masses of horror ones. I wish they would have done another season. I mean, seriously, I wished we could have seen a James Wan Masters of Horror episode. Because I'd like to see what he had done. I mean, he's already in Masters of Horror. You know, the organization is still going, and he was actually invited. You know, to that L.A. Uh, place, they actually gather once a year and have have a meal at this restaurant where Masters of Horror actually was given birth to. You know, it was like a bunch of uh, filmmakers getting together and saying, oh, yeah, we need to work on a project together. You know, and it's like all the greatest uh, modern uh, horror people together, working together on on projects and stuff. And oh my God, you, Masters of Horror was just fantastic. You know, seriously, hell, they could do an anthology film, Masters of Horror anthology film. You know, I keep I keep mentioning that to uh, 
some of these ones when I talk to them and it's like, eh, no, I don't know. You have to get the money together and you have to get the uh, filmmakers together. But what, what do you think? I mean, that would be like the ultimate anthology film. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have that these days. No. No, I've been pretty much disappointed in a lot of the anthology films that we've had on the last five years. You know, but yeah, you get all these ones, you know, you get uh, Guillermo del Toro and, you know, James Wan, Sam Raimi, you know. Hell, uh, did, you, did you know that um, uh, David Cronenberg's son is doing horror films now? Yes. Yeah, I'm 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 intrigued to actually see his work. See if see if it's uh in the blood so to speak. Uh supposedly they're going to be putting one of his films on Netflix and this thing has been garnering awards. So I'm intrigued to see it. You know, oh, a, another piece of trivia about uh, Hammer. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone seems to think that Hammer films were like the high budget uh, horror films of their time. And the fact is that Hammer was, for the most part, uh, very low budget films. You know, they, they they worked on a very shoestring budget. But the thing is, it's amazing because they did all of these, uh, you know, with with the, the old time time period ones with the horse drawn carriages and all that. Mm -hmm. And they did that on such a low budget. It, it blows me away. I mean, they said even that they they were barely able to afford um, Christopher Lee, and several times he nearly pulled out of productions because they weren't going to pay him his standard rate. Now, yeah, yes, Mister Highland, I did watch the documentary on hammer horror <laughs> oh. and found out how how you know i mean they they said that the the sets creaked the sets creaked and a lot of the production was done in the same studio, which was used to be a uh, a warehouse, so they basically did the same thing that Saw did, and they they built sets on a warehouse in a warehouse, and they said that the place w was nasty. <laughs> The place where they had to had to make the the films. So inter interesting little thing on on Hammer. Uh, you got anything else to s talk about, like on Hammer and that? And uh, no, not about not about that. Okay, well. Anything else? Yeah. Um, well, I remember the last episode we we did. Someone uh, um, wrote in and asked us to do a show on the Blackula films. 
remember? Yeah. Uh, well, I do have some guests in mind. I've also been thinking maybe uh, we, we could ask uh, the person that wrote in to join in on that discussion. Well, think? yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I still have their, uh, their email. I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to get them. Okay. I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right. Yeah, that would be interesting because I know, you know, I get, I guess this person really loves the Blackula films, and he's from Oakland. I know that. So he's here. So he's here in the Bay Area. Okay. Uh, also, I've been thinking of doing a show about a few episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. So maybe. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, you mentioned about that. Yes. Yes. Um. I was thinking some of our listeners could write in and tell us which episodes they would like us to discuss. Oh, okay. Good good deal. Yeah, so definitely, definitely, fans. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll put up a thread on Facebook and a few of my other social media uh, places. Yeah, and they can also write into the show. Yeah. Yeah, write into the show about it and, you know, find out what episodes they want to do. And we'll see if we can find the episodes because, you know, as, as much as I, as I've watched... Alfred Hitchcock presents. Uh, I don't remember, you know, and and the thing is that we, you know, you have the original Alfred Hitchcock presents, and then you have the newer Alfred Hitchcock presents. Yeah, but we're talking about the original. Yeah, the original, the classic one, which unfortunately I don't remember a lot of the episodes. It's it's funny. I used to watch it uh, weekly, you know, when I was a kid. But it's like, you know, you you watch that, and then you watch Twilight Zone, and then you watch uh, One Step Beyond, and all these other shows, and it's like everything gets mixed up. I mean. The most I remember of those shows is I remember Alfred Hitchcock's uh, introductions for the most part. I do recall that his his episodes had a lot of twists in that and they were situational type uh, tales. Which is, you know, very much Hitchcock style. So be interesting. You know, I know, I know you have a bunch of favorites because you're always talking about them. Well, I haven't seen many episodes. Yeah, but the ones that you that you have seen, you're, you know, it's like, you know, you like that 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 as much as you like uh, the Twilight Zone. Well, I have to watch more of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, shit. You watched? Didn't you watch all the Twilight Zones? Yeah. Well, actually, no, no, because you haven't watched the uh, other series. You know, they've got like. Uh... Uh... Three, three other versions of the Twilight Zone. For me, I like the 90s version. Well, late 80s, early 90s version. That, that was really good. Uh, the 
latest one, no, I didn't like it. And the one before that, I didn't like either. The only the only episode I liked was the uh, a sequel to A Happy Life. The, and literally, that was the only episode that anyone else uh, who watched that show actually liked was one episode out of all of them. But, but yeah, that's how, that sounds interesting. I mean, we'll have to find the episodes that, you know, uh, how many episodes are we going to do? Like three or four? Three. Okay. Three top episodes. Okay. That's good. Because I know I know that's only a half an hour long. Um, most of those, the late, you know, the later versions they made it an hour, but uh, the original ones were about a half an hour, so that would actually be good. Because then we got just ninety minutes of uh, of that. Uh, what we should do is, if we're going to do that, we'll, we should uh, watch the episodes initially uh, months ahead, well, a few, a couple months ahead of the show, and then re-watch them just before the show. What do you think? I suppose. Yeah. You know, just so that we get an idea... And you know we're feeling comfortable with uh, doing doing the show uh, that time because you know if we rush it and we haven't viewed the episodes and we try to rush through the episodes, we're not going to have time to actually analyze. You know, I love I loved. Uh, with this show, this show actually getting the time to uh, analyze uh, demons of the mind, mind, which oh by the way, Mister Highland, they also uh, uh, put this film out as Demon of the Soul, Demons of the Soul as well. Which I don't understand why, but they did. <laughs> so I ended up when I was trying to get copies, I I looked under both titles, and they and all the all the copies were fucked up. Uh, then of course they had the Italian cut of it, <laughs> and I didn't. You know, dubbed, and I don't want to watch the movie uh, dubbed. <laughs> Speaking of Alfred Hitchcock presents, I'm also planning some other old films from the, from many decades past. Oh, cool! Remember one I, I mentioned. Uh, in the early 1940s. Oh, really? Cool. And speaking of which, um, I'm debating whether or not we should uh, discuss Arsenic and Old Lace. I mean, is that a, is that a uh, full-fledged horror comedy, would you say? Uh, it's a murder comedy. Okay. Which is fine because the, the, there's a, a horror aspect to it. Okay. You know, a lot of these ones, I mean, shoot, you know, people do not consider um, whatever happened to Baby Jane a horror f- film, but it is essentially a horror film. It's a psychological horror film. But people don't look at it like that. 
Okay. Or so. films like uh, Who Slew Auntie Rue? Are those? Okay, so we'll be at some point. We'll discuss also. Um, Arsenic and Old Place. When I do not know. Cool deal. Cool deal. I. I've seen the film. I do remember seeing the film. I just don't remember the plot or anything. Uh, I haven't seen it in about 30 years. Yeah. uh, Let me see. Last time I probably saw it was when I was 12. And I'm 57. (laughs) So... A a lot of these uh, older films... Uh, were ones that I watched back then, yeah. You know, because nowadays they don't uh, they don't put these on like they did, th- you know, in the good old days. So, yeah. Also, I've um, you may remember last episode. I I said I've been debating whether or not. We should discuss Tales from the Crypt. Oh, God, we uh, need to. Well, I'm, I, I say that because there's parts of it that are really scary. And I don't want our listeners to have a heart attack. No. They no, they won't, but, they won't have a heart attack. How do you know? Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, no, they're not going to have a heart attack. Uh, more than likely, they'd have more of a heart attack uh, listening to our discussion of uh, twenty, you know, hundred and twenty days of Sodom. Yes, I know. I I know. You told me never speak of that film again. Okay. Uh, from now on. Uh. That film is called The Rutabaga. How's that? So just remember, Mr. Highland, from now on, that film is called The Rutabaga. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, and the same with... uh, uh, Let me see. What, What was that film? Oh. Uh, vomit dolls. That that one's Rudy Bega too. As I was saying, okay, listeners, if you if you want us to discuss Tales from the Crypt in the future, let us know. Or if you do not want us to discuss it, let us know. And speaking of which, I've been. Slowly making my way through the uh, AC horror titles. Cool. So, I'm almost done uh, with Vault of Horror, and uh, which has the last. Uh, no, it's the first story in the film about, nice. the, about the killer Santa. Yeah, I love the killer, killer Santa. Uh, when they redid, uh, you know, when they redid uh, Tales from the Crypt, that was that was actually the first episode. I know, I remember. And, and oh my god, that was good. You know, you did you didn't think it was going to be as good as the original, but it was. Yeah. So anyway, oh, and one other thing, a little bit of trivia for you, Mr. Highland. What? It's funny, every time they redo the Twilight Zone, they for some reason they always decide to do a new adaptation of your favorite Twilight Zone episode of all time. 
You know, the one with Bill Shatner. Oh, and the big the, teddy bear guy. Oh, the nightmare at how many yeah. thousand feet? 65,000 feet or 35? 35,000 feet. Okay. So that's, that's yeah. Uh, even the new Twilight Zone, the last one, they did an adaptation of it, but they did an adaptation, but it wasn't an adaptation. Because there was no gremlin in it. Oh. Yeah, I hated it. I hated it. Mm. I'm okay. Uh, What was your opinion on the John Lithgow adaptation? Oh, that one was good. Okay. Because, of course, it had the Lithgow. (sighs) Okay, yeah. I was okay with it. You know, I still I still think that Bill Shatner did that was one of his better uh, performances. You know, I he just did so good in that. You know, and of course, you know, they had that incredibly superior uh makeup job for the for the gremlin you know i mean even miss mr highland loves that don't you <laughs> i mean that's that's isn't that one of your favorites mr highland <laughs> yeah. yeah and it had it, you know i i've never seen a uh, a monster with an afro. <laughs> yeah, that one had an afro. Oh, you're great. talking about the original? I thought you were. Yeah, about the original. The, I thought you were I, talking no. about the. I thought you were talking about the remake. Oh fuck no! I didn't like that gremlin. Oh. No, I didn't. I mean, it, you know. I was I anticipated that one. And it was like, oh yeah, you know, let's let's see see if you can scare me. Actually scare me this time because originally when when you were a little kid and you were watching uh that movie, Shatner got you to the point where you were actually scared and then you see this this big teddy bear thing and it's it actually did scare me when I was a kid, but uh, the lift go go one. The way they filmed the, the it, you could barely see it, so I was not impressed, and I honestly felt sorry for the uh, effects people because they put so much work into that gremlin and you couldn't really see him <sighs> you know because the, because the scene was so damn dark but anyways you know i do have to admit that lithgow did a good job in that in that thing because he was freaking out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he was like that through the, through the whole segment. Yeah. And the newest version, uh, no. <laughs> no. I uh, The actor j- didn't do a good job. The uh, God, you'd have to see it. You'd be going, "What the fuck did they do to my my favorite?" Because I was sitting there. You know, they go, they go. Oh yeah, it's it's an adapt. The first episode is an adaptation of that episode, the one with Bill Shatner. 
And it's like, I go watch it and I go, what the fuck? Because they totally rewrite it. No gremlin in it. Uh, the guy is basically having uh, visions of the airplane crashing. So at the end, he doesn't even survive. The plane actually crashes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's fucked. And they end... Actually, they do have the gremlin because they have a picture of the gremlin on a card. At the end, it's floating in water. Okay, well, anyways. Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, okay, we we always uh, rate rate our movie that we are we discuss. So, what what's your rating on the Oogie Boogie scale? I would give it a three and a half out of five. Okay, three and a half out of five. Yeah, Oogie Boogie scale, I would give it probably the same thing. I mean, it's not a great Hammer film. It's an interesting Hammer film in the fact that this is an original idea. It's not an adaptation of a story. It's not an adaptation of a classic it's it was just you know their writers going okay we want to do uh an original story for once and so they they came up with this interesting they should have gotten a better writer and Probably if they'd gone a little bit more into the incest and a little bit more into the what the doctor's uh, treatment was going to be, uh, it would have made it a little bit better. But, you know, it got made. It's, it's out there. Problem is, is you can't find it any place. It it, dry, it drove me nuts. And people, if you can find a digital copy of this thing, please send me a link that I can find a digital download of this damn thing. Because it's a pain in the ass to find. I mean, you and I, we found we found this site. Uh, that we could stream and watch the film. Mm -hmm. And, man, that site, I hated it. It they, They give you, like, four links in order to, you know, and say basically, okay, if one link doesn't uh, work, try another link until you find a link that actually works. I ended up, I found this one link that actually worked. It went halfway through the film, and then it switched me over to a advertisement for a porno site. So then I had to go to one of the other ones and I went halfway. I finally found it. It was like the next to the last link and managed to get get the rest of the way through the film. (laughs) 
that just blew me away. And the other links were were totally corrupted. They just kept uh, sending you to porno sites. So, anyways, but you lucked out, I gather, Mister Highland. You you actually found the one that actually went through the entire movie. Yes. Thank God. Yeah, I guess it was the next to the last one, right? No. No. Oh, okay, because I guess the other ones went down or something and were just yeah, it was it was it was gnarly. I mean the first one that I tried was the second one. And it got me through halfway through the film. Then, uh, well, anyways. So yeah, this this is this is just a little thing to tell you, li- listeners, what we have to go through for you. Yeah, uh, and also that porner site that they stuck me on. I'm still, I'm st- still not going to be able to get that image out of my face. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, yeah, Mistress Verna. <laughs> That was scary. <laughs> yeah, uh yeah, that was real scary. Um anyways, you know, but you know, I've 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 gone through worse. I watched the Serbian film. So <laughs> that's worse. Okay, so anyways, uh what we what are we going to be uh watching next month? Um it is a horror comedy. I don't want to ruin the surprise of what it is. And we are going to have a special guest. Awesome. Um, so join us in the first week of April. Coldale. First week of April. Because because this is going to be... This is going to be fun. Yes, and and next next month we'll we'll be back to our normal uh, stuff. Let's put it Mm -hmm. that way. Yes. You know, actually it'll be good for you. Yes, I know some of you are going to be bitching about the fact that you didn't get your uh your scream factory this month uh believe me the way that scream factory's been going uh it'll be great because i'll be able to give you a good amount of a stuff it's been pretty it's been pretty bad this month uh for scream factory anyways Alrighty, so yeah be ready next uh month uh any last words there mr highland uh i just like to thank the listeners and uh i hope you write in about uh um requests that i that i mentioned about Alfred hitchcock and uh tales from the crypt so uh this should be interesting Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I, you know, definitely I'm up for uh Tales from the Crypt and that I'm excited. That is something that well, I'm excited we'll, we'll, about. We'll see what our listeners have to say. About oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Listeners, definitely check you know, give us give us the go ahead for that because or uh, not, we'll see what they have yeah. to say. Yeah. Yeah, because that one actually has one of my favorite uh Peter Cushing uh 
uh, short tales. I love that one. Anyways, yeah, so be ready next uh, month for the uh, comedy horror uh, film and discussion and uh, with the special guest. And as always, keep America strong, watch horror films, and catch you next next time with me and Mr. Chrissy Chris Highland.
<laughs> Phoenix Comics and Toys. <laughs> Hello, creeps. Get your one-of-a-kind custom horror host figurines. That's right, kiddies. Oh, you can find hosts like the Keymaster, Mummy and the Monkey. I just love that name. <laughs> Mr. Lobo, or even Carlos Borloff's Monster Madhouse. <laughs> Tell them your bony little friend, the Crypt Keeper, sent you. <laughs> it won't get you a discount, but it might get you killed. <laughs> Phoenix Comics and Toys.